Welcome to the Men Unplugged Show. Get ready to plug in and recharge your life, family, and career while igniting your faith in Christ. Now, here's your host and champion of helping men live with passion and purpose, Jeff Jarena. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Jeff Jarena here, and welcome to the Men Unplugged Show. On today's podcast, I want to talk about the issue of discipleship. But here's the thing. I want to talk about it in a good way, in a way that will take the pressure, the stress, and the weight off your shoulders so that when we're done with this episode, you're not going to have to worry about it anymore. And to help you with that, I'm going to be sharing two things that we should never do with respect to discipleship and the simple and natural way to not only disciple others, but to lead them to Jesus. Now, before we break that down, I want to give you three simple ways that you can get help right now. The first way is to go to faithwithoutfearbook.com. Again, that's faithwithoutfearbook.com. When you do that, you'll be able to get a copy of my book, Faith Without Fear, How to Share What You Believe with Confidence and Power. Now, this book gives you a simple step-by-step guide for removing any fear that you have about sharing your faith. While at the same time, it teaches you a natural, practical way to share the gospel to anyone you come across. In addition to that, it also goes into this issue that we're talking about today of discipleship in a much deeper look. Now, if you, your church, or your school need a more customized training, then just send me an email at jeff at menunplugged.net. When you do that, you'll be able to find out more and set up personal or group training on this or other issues. And lastly, if you like the idea of having an online course that you can watch video lessons and have lifetime access to, then visit my course page at jeffjarina.com forward slash courses. That's J-E-F-F-J-E-R-I-N-A dot com forward slash courses. All right, so let's jump into today's topic. And as I said, there are two things that I think that we should never do in discipleship. And we're going to get this from a key passage of scripture. It's a really cool story. In fact, it's one of my favorite biblical stories is from Acts 8, 26 through 40. Now, we're not going to go over every verse here. I'm just going to hit up maybe four or five key verses. But the verses that I share, I think, are really going to hit home here and really going to highlight or explain what I think God is showing us that we should not do in discipleship. Now, the reason I bring this up is probably over the past three or four months and Well, now that I'm really thinking about it, probably the past 20 years that I've been doing ministry and the issue that comes in play here that I hear a lot, whether it's a pastor, it's a it's a congregation or lay leader, um, ministry leader, whatever that is. I hear a lot. Well, you know, we're struggling with discipleship. We don't know if we're doing discipleship the right way. We need to create X, Y, Z. When you create all these ministries and you create all these programs, da, 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 list goes on. And I can just. I just hear it in the voice when I'm talking to them. I see it in their eyes. And maybe this describes you today. There's this fatigue. There's this stress. There's this burden that, you know, we don't need to carry in the Christian community with respect to discipleship that we just feel wiped out. We feel exhausted. We feel taxed. And what happens is it comes from we ourselves, we're trying to do too much of the work. We don't just let it happen naturally. You know, let God do the hard part of discipleship. I I will tell you, I'm not going to go into full detail into this today because I just don't have the time for that on this episode. But if you do want to get deeper, you you know, you want to get a a more complete answer. Okay. And you really want to get this mapped out, get that full help that you need, whether it's for yourself, your church, whatever that is, you need more help on discipleship that I want to encourage you first to check out my book, Faith Without Fear how to share what you believe with confidence and power. Now to do that, just go to faithwithoutfearbook.com and make sure you spell out the word without. Now, if you want a more customized or personalized training for you, your church, your school, whatever that is, then just send me an email at jeff at menunplugged.net. Now, as we look at this passage, I do want to ask that you just, you know, in the back of your mind, And I'm not saying this to convict you or or in any way, but I hope what I share with you is going to encourage you. It's going to empower you. And it's going to equip you in discipleship. But I do want to ask you just to be thinking about these two things. As we go over these verses, just be thinking about this. Number one, 
God does not want us to force discipleship. Secondly, God does not want us to fret or worry about discipleship. And the reason I say that is because this passage right here. And so we're going to look at verses 36, 37 to 40. And before I do that, I'm just going to set this up. What's happening is the Ethiopian eunuch is leaving Jerusalem, going to Gaza, and he's on this road, this dirt road. He's probably going, I don't know. He's, he's not in a car. He's not, you know, on a motorcycle. He's, you know, on a chariot. There's a horse that, that's, it's a horse-drawn chariot. So he's probably going, what would you say? Five miles, seven miles at most, I don't know. So he's not going very fast. And at the same time, Philip the evangelist is walking along. Now, he's not on the same path, per se, but he's walking along fairly close to this chariot. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit tells Philip to go talk to the eunuch. And then what does Philip do? He doesn't hesitate. He runs over to talk to the eunuch. Now, I will say this, number one, and I talk about this in my book and my training, Faith Without Fear, is that number one is Philip was ready to share the gospel. And that's what my training in my book does. It teaches you a simple, natural way to share the gospel. But that's what Philip did, number one. He was ready. He was prepared to share the good news of Jesus Christ. And secondly, he listened to what the Holy Spirit said. So we're now down to verse... 36. And it says this. Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, see, here's water. What hinders me from being baptized? Verse 37. Then Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ, is the son of God. Verse 38. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and he baptized him. Verse 39. Now, when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more and he went on his way rejoicing. Verse 40, but Philip was found at Azotus and passing through, he preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. (laughs) I love that story. Just those verses right there really hit home with me and they encouraged me and I hope they do this for you as well. What this passage tells us, what I think God is saying is number one, Christians do not force discipleship. Secondly, don't fret about discipleship. And you think about it here, if we look at these verses, Philip didn't do that. Other than sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, other than presenting the plan of salvation, and if you want to add here, baptizing, we can add that too. Other than that, those two things, There was no discipleship. Now, I will say this before we go on. Don't get caught up in that part here in this passage where it says that Philip baptized a eunuch. Don't get caught up in thinking that baptism was essential for the eunuch's salvation. And the reason why I'm saying that is remember, the eunuch asked Philip what hinders him from salvation And Philip said what? Verse 37. He says, if you believe with all your heart, you may. And the eunuch answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. Now, here's the thing. Belief before baptism. The eunuch believed first. And that was credit to him as salvation. Baptism was his right as a believer. His first way is saying, hey, I'm with Jesus and Jesus is with me. But baptism was not a requirement for salvation. I don't want to get caught up in the semantics here, but I really want to to address that here because I don't want us to get caught up in thinking that we have to do all this discipleship stuff, all these things, because that's not what God is telling us. In this passage, we know that there was no discipleship. Verse 39, now when they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught Philip away. There you go. As soon as the Ethiopian eunuch was baptized, the Holy Spirit took him away to somewhere else. 
and the eunuch was left there without any discipleship whatsoever. Now, here's the key, though, because now he's a saved man by believing in Jesus Christ. It says what? He went on his way rejoicing. That's proof right there that the eunuch was saved. He was rejoicing in his new salvation, in his new life with Jesus Christ. And I hope what I'm doing here today is encouraging you. And, and, and I, I know that I'm probably saying the same thing multiple times, but I'm saying this because I hear this issue of discipleship so much and the stress and the weight and the burden and the pressure that we in the Christian community that we carry that God's saying, don't worry about it. I've got it under control. And the reason why I say that is because God is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's a creator of everything, creator of everybody. He's the father of all. And if that's the case, he knows exactly what, when, and how to disciple somebody better than we do. And for me, I tell you what, I find comfort in that. I find rest in that. And you know, and I'm not stressing about it because I know God has it under control. And this passage here, learning from what Philip, the evangelist did, we see that we don't have to force discipleship and we don't have to fret discipleship. And that's a good thing because you know what? God's going to let it happen naturally. He's going to take care of it easier than we could. And I hope today you find comfort in that. Now, I'm not saying that God does not want us to disciple others. I'm not saying that at all. In fact, that's part of the Great Commission. But I am saying is that we don't have to force it. We don't have to worry about it. Just let it happen naturally. With that understanding, with that mindset, that means that even though we may never see somebody again, and if there's an opportunity to share the gospel to them, we need to do it. We need to be ready, just like Philip the Evangelist was, because you know what? We can all of a sudden be taken somewhere else. God can say, you know what? I want you somewhere else. And God's going to know what to do with him better than we are. So I hope again, what I share with you, I hope it encouraged you, hope it empowered you, and I hope it equipped you. Now, if you want to get specific training on this, you want to get deeper into this training, then I would encourage you to get my book, Faith Without Fear. Again, all you need to do is go to faithwithoutfearbook.com. And if you want to get more personalized or customized training, then send me an email at jeff at menonplug.net. We can talk about a virtual or live training for you, your church, or your group. And then lastly, if you're more inclined to video courses and you want that lifetime access to an online training course, then I encourage you to check out my online courses at jeffjarina.com forward slash courses. Until next time, stay plugged in and recharged. God bless. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed this episode. There's plenty more to see at menunplugged.net, including key resources and ways to engage with Jeff in his training and speaking forums. While there, don't forget to subscribe and receive a free gift. We look forward to you joining us next time here on the Men Unplugged Show. Men Unplugged.